Welcome to the studio again. Um, so today um, I recorded some videos of uh, Willard's painting I'm working on with uh, eight people. So, um, you know, it was several hours of, uh, um, um, let me make sure that, the, yeah, several hours of, uh, um, of working, focusing and so on. So, um, you know, I've decided to do a little flower by Monet, I mean, copy of Monet. Um, I mean, not copy, but inspired, just just to get some rest. Because you know, sometimes when you overwork on something, it's good to just have something you can switch to that is uh, more um, fun to do. And Manet, I mean, those, those paintings inspired by Manet are definitely something that I really enjoy doing. So, um, and you know, I have, I think so far I've done something like uh, ten. And for the project I'm, I want to do, I need 16, so number 11. So this painting is actually strange because it's painted on a really dark background, which is almost black, but for, for many reasons, I'm gonna use black, blue, and green to paint the background because I don't necessarily want it to be completely black. And even, Though um, I like the fact that the, um, these colors are covering, you know, I told you there's some different pigment and so, so di different quality of pigment, and so some pigment are covered more covering than others, and so on. And so the one I'm using, the black, I mean not the black, the green and the blue I'm using are really, um, really strong when it comes to power of covering. Um, so uh, they're gonna they're gonna feel the the paper really quickly, I mean really well, so I'm not going to have any kind of a brush work in the background, which I don't want on that particular painting, because you can see that the background is really flat. So I'm going to do that. I'm still using some black. You know, there's this whole thing about uh, we should not use black in painting, blah, blah, blah. And tell that to Mother Well or Picasso or whatever. I think I think you can use black. Don't think about it. The thing is, as I say, I, I added some colors in the black, so the black is covering has a better covering power. So you see, I'm taking some blue. Mostly that cyan blue is pretty good, and a little bit here. It has even some red in it. I don't know, just really beautiful color. So now you're used to it. You see me doing that thing already several times. I might sneeze, maybe not. Oh. So um, I always start with the background. Trying to block that surface. You know, someday we'll have fun, we'll work on a different color paper. Maybe even, why not, a black paper. For this one, you know, I told you I feel like there's some red, so I'm going to put some red in my brush. And so even if all, all those blacks are really close. The fact that I had some red is going to give some different uh, feeling. Okay. Now I'm going to work. I'm going to change of brush. I don't want to work with that really large brush all the time. Um, I think I have a smaller one. Where is it? Okay, so, so you see I have some red we mix with the liquid, so I'm going to take it off because it's going to take over a lot of other colors. Um, I can still use it, like for example for that kind of shadow here. There's also something going on here. Um, the leaves, oh, there's some leaves here. Beautiful leaf here. I 
it's so fresh to do that after the, the working on the portrait. So, you know, it's something I, I really love is to switch from something more demanding or, you know, more where I need to focus and, you know, I cannot, you know, if I do a mistake, it's kind of a, mostly when you work on commission, if you do a mistake, it's kind of annoying. And then switching to something like this that is fun, fast. Um, it's a little bit like my uh, my cherry on the cake. You know those leaves have some blue in it. So I'm going to use... So I've... I've done, I was not always doing that, but recently I'm, I'm putting a pad of, of paper underneath my brushes and quite often I clean my brushes in it, you'll notice it in the... And it's not something I was doing before, I don't know, it's kind of new. I guess we all get some new habits sometimes. For no reason, just it happens someday you do something and you say, oh, that's cool, I like it. As I say, you know, after working on those portraits, it's almost like I have a need for a bit of craziness. You know, something like it's fast, it's just fun to do. I don't need to overthink, just painting large and I actually don't know about the, you know, if it's something really that impact me, you know, when I paint so seriously kind of, and then I switch to something more, more fun. I guess it helps the, the tough part and the, first, <laughs> the, the, the easy part. So I just want to show you something I've just done that is pretty cool. I use some violet, green and blue, and this, so everything is kind of toned down. And they are of colors, and I really love that. For some reason, I think they, they're really cool. They dance together. I'm gonna get a, a brush that is a bit um, smaller because I'm gonna start working on those pink flowers. The only way to do it is just to go with a lot of white and a little tiny bit of pink. Same thing, I'm having fun. I'm just enjoying what I'm doing. That beautiful red. A little red here as well. Some here. have that beautiful yellow flower, kind of, but it's yellow, but there's mostly white in it. So, you see, uh, having Having fun painting is actually really important too. I mean, I understand if some of you really want to learn how to paint and so, you know, it's a dedication, it's something we think, you know, I need to be serious about it and so on. But on the other hand, you know, having a good time is really important as well. You don't want to make the work become too serious, too you know, you need, still need to have some, you know, Georges Bataille called it la part, au, la part au feu, which is the, the part to the fire, which is uh, something where you just let go and you don't try to 
overdo it. So what I'm doing right now, so sometimes you have some moirage, that means that the, the when the painting is still um, sinking in, sometimes you have a different perception of uh, shiny and glossy. So that's what I felt and you know, I touched it up and actually it didn't do anything really, so it's fine. I'm going to just let it dry. I'm going to need a little bit of black to go around those leaves here. Even maybe getting into them for in some cases to redraw them, to make the tension. Same thing here, you know, we have just a little tiny leaf on its own. Just trying so to a little things okay now I'm gonna work with a beautiful ultramarine blue some white and I'm gonna go inside those things I can even put some so you see what I'm doing right now I'm preparing the under layer so I know that I'm gonna have all those little white dots to put somewhere I mean to paint after Right now, what I'm doing is just uh, preparing an under layer. So for that, I can use quite a lot of liquid, you know, to mix with the black. So we create some sort of passage. So we're preparing the we're preparing the the background for all those little white dots that we'll do with a smaller brush. And we're gonna do the same thing here. Here, this one is fast. It's uh, going to be a really fast painting. It's pretty easy. And once again, don't get frustrated if I do it faster than you. Um, first of all, I've been doing that for a couple of a couple of decades, and. Um, and as I say, I just spent hours working on, on the portrait. So right now what I need is just let go, just have fun. And once again, you can experience that, you know, it's uh, you're more than welcome to just work on something really, you know, kind of painful or whatever. And then you just say, okay, you know what? Now it's time for fun. You know, sometimes I do abstract for that reason. Sometimes I'm just, uh, I just like to, um, Actually, when I do painting like this one, I almost feel like I'm doing abstract. I love to do abstract as a refreshment for the mind. And don't make me wrong, I'm not saying abstract is easy to do. But um, definitely, sometimes I just like to, you know, let go. And abstract is a good way because it just... Uh, You know, you don't need to overthink, overdo it. So once again, I'm looking for colors. There's a beautiful blue here. Now we can find it back here as well. The most saturated was definitely this one. So there's some around, but they're not as saturated. So I can use the same color, but mix with some uh, um, liquid. Okay, 
okay we have a beautiful light here we have something here like this here we have kind of a messy dark something so I'm just gonna do it like this we have a little pink I'm almost, almost running out of white oh 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 so when you do something like this you know you, you saw me correcting it with just my finger Okay, I'm gonna need some white. I like that so brand. They're not great quality colors, but they're perfect for what I need to do. I mean, when I say great quality, um, you know, there's some brands that are much more expensive and you know, it's, um, I already explained, but it's mostly linked to the, the quality of the pigment, of course, but also to the density of the color. Um, and as I said, I, I like colors that are not that dense. So for me, the cheap stuff is sometimes the best. So don't feel like you have to buy um, the top of the line of, you know, that that brand or what not the brand or whatever you know there's some Okay, I'm gonna get a little bit of blue mixed with some white, with some liquid, and I'm gonna work on those. Feel it almost darker, by the way. The more violet there. And you know, the thing is, try not to be systematic. So, you know, that's the thing I'm trying to almost mimic like I'm shaking. So, by doing that, um, I'm creating a pattern that is not systematic. You know, if I was doing just tack, 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 there's a lot of chance after a few seconds, the thing would become boring because it's too um, static. So try to work on your um, random gesture. The way I'm going to do it, I'm, I'm going to show you something. I'm going to go back with some black and I'm going to do exactly the same thing, but with black. So that's going to help me to create a more unexpected pattern because now I don't know if it's the black has been first or if it's the blue. And that's what I want. I don't want to, you know, once again, it's a painting. So everything is in the same space. There's nothing, I mean, technically, the that is in front of the background but remember we're talking about painting and painting is flat so it's important to keep in mind that the painting is flat and so everything is as important it's not like a, there's something in front or in the back in the painting everything is at the same level And that's actually the adventure of the abstract. 
painting is just uh, it's a question about figuration and the space you know what if a painting um, what, what if the space of a painting is actually the painting itself so the, 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 the wheel abstract is, is really about that. So you see, I'm, I'm having some issue right now. You can see it on the screen because now I need the painting to sink in. So I'm not disturbed by that, uh, um, by that thing. But um, when the painting is going to, um, as I say, it's going to sink in, it should be fine. By the way, that's why we use varnish. It's because the varnish help to put everything back in the same uh, at the same level you know the and we'll talk about it you know along the along the way you know is it really important to varnish a painting and um might not be that necessary. It depends on the painting, it depends on what you're doing, and sometimes varnishing a painting kind of kills the painting. Okay. Ah, it felt good to. It felt good after the, the torture of the portrait to just, you know, paint something in a few minutes and um, uh, and just have fun. Makes me feel relaxed and enjoying the the process more. It's still the same vase with those little white dots. That's funny. He, he did all those paintings with the same vase. So either he had only one vase in his house or he really loved that vase. I will let you come up with your own conclusion. Maybe, maybe if some of you have the, the answer, um, you can send me an email and let me know because I don't know. I don't know why he used the same vase over and over again. I mean, I know when I was a, a younger painter, when I was doing still lives and so on, I was limited with a, a certain number of objects. I didn't have like infinite number of things to paint still lives. So it's like, it's a funny thing like with Chardin. Um, Chardin did a lot of uh, um, uh, beautiful, beautiful little still lives at the time where the still life was not a, a genre that was really valued and the still life of Sharna used pretty much all the time the same same component so it's it's pretty funny let me see which camera we have that's this one yeah so um so Sharna Jean Simeon Jean Simeon Sharna I was looking for his first name and um, he was he was painting those those still lives and that's funny because we know pretty much what he had in his house <laughs> Because you're always painting the same thing. Anyway, so um, now the little magical moment. I could have done better. I uh, didn't do a good job on this one. So you see, if I'm, I haven't done a good job, I can just go back. Because it's fresh, I can just use my finger to just do that. Because I like when those lines are pretty sharp. That's my uh, scientific background that is coming back to life. 
Okay, so I'm just going to clean my hand a little bit because I don't want to stain that paper. I know I could have done a bit more work on it, you know, like I'm seeing that. I've been a bit lazy. Or more, more truthfully, it's not maybe lazy, just, just as I say, you know, the, the portrait before just was um, kind of a torture. Anyway, don't make me wrong, I love to do portrait, but it's, it's, it's more difficult to do portrait than, than to do that. And uh, I like my little flower, you know, if, I, if we can put it side by side with the other one. It's cute. It's going to add to the collection. So we are at 11 now. Bye-bye.